All right, guys, so we're here in my 2006 uh, Colorado, and I have a check engine light, so let me go ahead and scan it. It's for a uh, small EVAP leak, and uh, I just want to kind of show you how I'm going to attack this problem. So first, I'm going to just go ahead and scan the codes inside of the uh, thing to verify that that's the only code for right now. And then once I do that, um, I'm going to um, sort of, I guess, figure out if it's a per solenoid valve or the vent valve. And it's usually the, com the most common problem when you have this, with this year making model truck is the, um, is the per solenoid valve. So, but let's see here without traction control. And what I want to see is just how, um, you know, sh I guess not just how, but is that actually the problem here? So, I'm going to use this first of all to do a purge and seal to verify that there is an actual leak so we can see the decay inside of the, um, you know, inside of the gas tank. And then I'm going to uh, use my smoke machine if it comes to that and try to figure out is the vent valve leaking smoke, is the purge valve leaking smoke or somewhere else. All right. One thing I love about old cars like this, um, there's, there's only six modules in this truck. So um, although it doesn't have all the bells and whistles as a more modern, you know, truck or whatever, um, that's a very solid truck. And, it only, and because of the few modules, that's just less things to go wrong. So as you can see already, we got the two codes in the, in the uh, power system. And those two codes are going to be, uh, and it's also going to say a circuit code. And again, these two codes, what I've seen as far as common fixes would be changing the per solenoid valve, but we don't just want to change parts. But at the same time, those parts are pretty cheap. And if you was to fire the parts cannon, it wouldn't be so bad. So I'll say this, I have loaded the parts cannon. I've already, I already have a vent valve, uh, a, a, a canister vent valve already and I also had the per solenoid valve already as well so um, either way if I don't need one or the other or both I mean eventually on this year of truck they're eventually gonna go bad so I'll just have it because again this truck only has about 147,000 miles on it there's gonna be plenty of miles left to see on this truck um, let's go ahead into the power system here read DTC diagnostic trouble code and what do we see we see a oh large leak detected okay i thought it was small okay large leak detected and it also says evaporative emission system solenoid circuit so that could just means that the purge solenoid is just not having the correct duty cycle that's, that's what it can mean. It could mean because, again, I know that this per solenoid valve works because I can turn it on and hear it click. We'll probably take a look at that in a second. We also can turn on the uh, EVAP canister and hear that, um, you know, click as well. That doesn't mean that it's good, but at least it works. So, again, we see a circuit for the solenoid, which usually what I would believe is they're talking about the per solenoid in this case. And um, then, well... The, it, again, I know it works, but again, the duty cycle could just not be what the truck is expecting to pull vapors out of the um, gas tank. All right, so we've established that. So now what we're going to do, and if you hear a fan in the background, excuse me, I mean, it's very hot in my garage today. I mean, the heat index today is supposed to be like 110 or something. I have a neck fan on and I also have my Ryobi fan on the ground going, so... Um, you hear a fan, sorry about that, but it is a very hot <laughs> and I don't have an air conditioning garage. All right, oh, let's go back here. I'm gonna have to start the truck up now. Let's go into diagnose. Sorry about that, I came out. We're gonna go into activation test, uh, engine, and we're gonna go to evap purge and sip. We're gonna have to turn the truck on here. Let's go ahead and turn that on. All right, so what you wanna do with a purge and seal is that you want to seal the system and look for any decay in the gas tank. And again, I think there is some tolerance. So if you say don't have a check engine light on, you do purge and seal and see just a very, very small decay, like a hundredth of, a, of, a, of a inches of water decaying, it probably doesn't mean anything. But in this case, we might see more. Let's go to a purge and seal real quick. 
uh, per solenoid close. Yeah, it's telling you all the good stuff here. All right, so what we want to do is we want to look at the live data. We're going to click show live data because we want to see the, the voltage to the gas tank and we also want to see the inches of water to the gas tank. All right, fuel uh, pressure sensor, 1.43 volts, millimeters of, what well, in this case it got millimeters of mercury, but regardless of whatever you didn't have, if it's inches of water, millimeters of mercury, um, it all remains the same. All right, so we got the purge, we got the event, oh, the, oh here's calling the solenoid for the event solenoid and the purge solenoid. Okay, so there lies another problem, well not problem, but another thing to distinguish which solenoid are they talking about. So, uh, it says venting right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and hit system seal. And it says not venting. And as you see, the millimeters of work, let's increase the purge solenoid valve. And what we want to do is because it's going to suck, now because it's sealed in the back, when it sucks the vapors out of the gas tank, it's going to pull a vacuum. So let's go ahead and just, just increase that to say 10, uh, maybe even 20. Let's just see what happens here. Uh, let's just make it, let's hit it again and see what happens here. All right, and then hit system seal. And that's going to stop the venting and turn it back to zero. And look at the decay. It's, it's, it lost the vacuum just that quick. I mean, that was all the way down to basically zero. And it shot back up just that fast. So what could be the problem here? So in other words, by doing this, we know the purge solenoid valve works, but we don't know how good it works. Um, we don't know if it says not venting, but it could be venting. So we're gonna, we're gonna test those things. For one more time, let's just get it up to say about, let's try to get it to negative millimeters of water. Let's try to get it to about here, negative, let's say negative two. Okay, that should be good. Now hit system seal here. Let's watch for the decay. Yeah, you see how quick that went back up to, that's, that's definitely not a slow leak, a low leak. I mean, that just immediately went from negative, when we went to seal, did not venting in zero per solenoid. Um, it immediately went back, like with no hesitation. So therefore we confirmed that there is a large leak in this system somewhere. So we got to figure that out. All right, so let's go ahead and back out of here. Release that command here from the system. And what we'll jump out and do now is uh, we'll locate the per solenoid valve and we will whip out the uh, smoke machine. First of all, we'll test the smoke and if the smoke machine stuff passes, then we may even go further to checking powers and grounds to these solenoids. All right, so this is the driver's side wheel well here. And the purge solenoid valve lives behind this wheel well cover here. So I'm gonna just take this off. I'm gonna do this off camera, but just to show you what you had to do. You can just get a cheap tool like this, or maybe even a screwdriver. This was only like a couple of dollars. And um, you know, take out these, uh, where I'm pointing to now, these little uh, uh, clips here. And uh, again, if you had to even take this big one out right here, it's just clips around here that you just take out with the same tool. So let me go ahead and do that, get access to the purge solenoid valve and we'll take it from there. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna have to take this tire out of the way because the access is buried up in there a little bit deeper than I thought. So um, again, you could definitely, you might can do it without taking the tire off, but it'll be that much more hard to get in there because it's right, it's just sitting right there up under there, but it's back a little bit further. You actually don't have to go up in this wheel well with your body as much as you can to get it out so um anyway let's go ahead and take these uh take these take these uh take these uh lug nuts off okay that one out of the car there it's okay i'll get that in a minute make this job pretty quick i love love my ryobi uh half an inch um uh, uh impact it's one of the best tools I've ever bought. One of the most used tools I've ever bought, actually. I've used this I don't know how many times. Okay. There you have that. So once we get this tire off here, I'm going to try to see if I can get up in here and show you real quick what exactly it looks like. Now, let me get this tire out of the way here. Oh, that tire's not as heavy as I thought. 
And let me set that right there. All right, sit right there, buddy. Don't roll anywhere. Oops. You did roll somewhere, didn't you? Hold up, maybe it'll stop. Okay. There we go, just stop. There we go. For some reason, boy, a tire will roll. <laughs> it will roll. All right. So we're in. So now, let me pick your camera up. Let me adjust this camera just a little bit. I'm going to try to make it so I can show you. Uh, let me set you right here for a second. I'm going to just get a screwdriver or something long that I can point it out. Use this here. Something I can point it out with. Because again, it's a little bit further up in there. And I want to try to get this light in here so I can use this. And uh, let's see. Is there any kind of way I can strap this light in because man this is this is gonna be hold up let's see let's turn it like this let's try that all right maybe this will work i can oh just right i can also zoom in i forgot about that all right so let's see yeah there it is i can get out of the way of the light see it right there look at that let me switch hands here let me try to zoom in again on it right there see this little uh right here that's it right there and um just to show you what it looks like this right here is the uh re the uh replacement part here let me zoom out a little bit zoom back out a little bit this is a replacement part here and i'll show you what it looks like so it's important to look at the parts so you can see what you're working with too but you can see we just have two uh, clips on each end for the hoses. And this right here is a clip that we're just uh, going to like a bracket. And so this right here is the original one. So I don't need another bracket. I should be able to slide it right on that bracket that's in the existing, uh, you know, that's on the existing um, purge valve. So what I'm going to do next is um, we're going to, I'm going to just try to devise a quick test with the smoke machine and um, see how that goes and um, where we go from there. All right, so I devised the plan. As you can see, I got the power running down to the smoke machine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this uh, smoke machine to this bladder that I have here inside of the gas tank here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to command the uh, uh, vent valve to close. So when I put smoke in here, we'll see if there's any smoke coming out of the front end like with the, um, with the, with the uh, per solenoid valve. Now, what I, how I've done this now, check this out. This is a solenoid valve. Now, I've taken this side right here off of the solenoid valve under, under the, the truck. And so this side here is still connected. So if I run smoke through, through this side here and don't see any smoke coming out of this side, because, again, this should not be having any sort of smoke come out of it. If smoke comes out of this, we'll know that this here is the problem. Well, and, and multiple other things would be the problem, at least that it's not holding a vacuum when it has no power. So now, um, let me go ahead and turn on the uh, smoke machine here. Make sure we get a little smoke right quick. So let's see what we got. I don't know if y'all can see. Yeah, so as you can see, that little stream of smoke right here. All right, so now let's go uh, command. Let me go to engine. Hold on. Let me first of all, let me stop the smoke machine. I'll do this second. Hold up. Let's go ahead and command the. Um, we know that's smoking. We'll come back to that. All right. So here we're going to go into the engine. We're going to go into uh, vent solenoid. And what we're going to do is command that not to vent because, again, and also that'll let us know if we see any smoke coming out of the vent solenoid valve as well. All right. So now, wait a minute. What just happened? Vent solenoid. Must have hit something wrong there. All right. Let me go to live data here. And we also want to look under the truck right now. It's venting per solenoid command 0%. Uh, fuel tank uh, pressures, uh, whatever that is, and the voltage. So we're going to go to off. This right here should um, says not venting now. So now we're going to turn this smoke machine back on. Okay, make sure we have some smoke here. 
We got, let's see, put it up against here, the black here. Okay, we got some smoke, as you can see. All right, now let's stick this in here. Just stuck that in there. And now we just wait and see what happens. So I'm gonna, uh, first of all, I'm gonna just look under the back of the truck and see that I see any smoke when it purge um, solenoid, to see that I see any smoke at all. Uh, it'd be hard for you to see, but if I see any, I can pinpoint it. So I don't see any smoke coming from back here just yet. If I see any, I'll, I'll make a note of that and I will, um, you know, get close ups on that with the camera. So let's go back under, under here. See, do we see anything? Okay. okay that's the uh, valve there. Let's see. And this is what, uh, let's see. Try to see, try to see if we can see any smoke come out of that. Let me zoom in on that, or, or focus on that rather. I don't see any smoke coming from here. And uh, walk around the hood here. Then I'm gonna get back under the truck real quick. Let me get my light from here. Let me take a look up under here anywhere. Don't, don't see any wisp of smoke anywhere. Maybe we would be on that side. So let's look under the truck because I don't want to run this too long up in my system here. All right, so now the uh, vent solenoid valve is right above this tire here. And I do see some smoke, actually. And that's not supposed to be venting right now. So let's take a look at that. See, can you see? Let's see. Can you see that wisp of smoke there? So now what I got to do is go up under here and see exactly what that is that is smoking. So let me uh, let me uh, get repositioned here and I'll be right back. All right, let's see if y'all can see the smoke here. I can back up off of it. It looks like it's coming from the vent solenoid valve. I mean, vent, uh, the, yeah, the vent valve here. So because this is not venting right now, and now two things could be going on here. I could be putting too much pressure into the system because again, that smoke machine is one bar and um, well, could just be leaking right here. So this is the only place that smoke is coming from. And so this leads me to believe that this here is the case. So I would have to take this tire down and then I would have to uh, go up in here and take this out. So let's go check that out and see, um, see what we're gonna find. All right, so it took me a little while to get the, um, the um, charcoal canister out to change the vent valve here. Only thing you have to do is you go up under that right beside the tire, there's a half an inch screw that just holds this bracket right here in. And that's really all you gotta take off, plus just take off the line that goes to here and the line that goes to here, and this whole unit slides right out. You don't even have to take the spare tire out. I thought you was gonna have to take, I thought I was gonna have to take the spare tire out of the way, but you do not. They at least engineered this well for that reason. Here's the, um, new install part that I'm gonna put in. And because this is an updated version, you have to have this uh, piggy, this pigtail right here to go with it as well. I think you can just order this canister if you can find it. I, I mean, not canister, this vent valve right here. But being that I couldn't find just this, at least I didn't look hard enough, I guess. I had to buy, I bought the whole unit with the hose that comes along with it and everything. So um, ne you don't necessarily have to buy this. But being that I did not look up here to see exactly what was smoking, it could be this hose could be compromised just the same. I don't I don't even know. So um, but anyway, let's go ahead and take this puppy off. There's this little rusty little bracket right here that I'm going to take off. Let me let me go get my screwdriver real quick and uh, do that. This part here, once I get this off i'd be pretty excited i'd be pretty excited to um to uh get this done here because um i don't know i just wanted to do it it's been a while since i since i um since i've been into this and um want to get uh wow this thing is rusty and uh i may have to give it a little persuasion here 
let's see can I do it like this because I had to let's see is that even coming wow that ain't even coming that thing is impregnated in there I'm gonna actually have to get my hammer here hold up um, don't want to to uh, mess up my charcoal canister because again that's just another expense that I don't want to spend any money on but at the same time if I have to get another one I hope I don't break this one by hitting this but the only thing I'm doing is just hitting this uh, bracket part here on the uh, what you call here this uh, this part here and there we go it's coming out can y'all see it yeah There we go. Took a little persuasion to get that puppy up out of there. So now let me take this hose on this side off. I tell you what, boy, GM got some hoses that um they very tricky to get off, but once you figure it out, it's not so bad. But wow, boy, did they really make it work for it. All right, so got this off. So let's just take, I'm gonna just inspect this really quick. If I see anything on it that's obvious. I don't see anything obvious just yet. Well, I see why you had to buy this one whole because this, this right here is actually melted, not melted, but kind of sized to fit on that. So let's see. I don't really see anything visual. I tell you what, let's check the resistance on it real quick. Just out of curiosity. Let me see, can I set you guys up to see the resistance real quick? Let's try the resistance. I wonder, can you see that? I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to, I don't know. I hope y'all can, I hope you can see that. If you can see that, I'll, I'll, I'll call it out. Cause I'm gonna have to try to touch both of these prongs in here. So, if I can see. Wait a minute. I'm not even sure this vent valve is even working. This thing just says open loop and it's not changing, is it? Hold on. First of all, let me see that. It should have some resistance here. No, it says open loop and I'm touching both prongs for sure. As you can see, all right, so I'm touching both prongs and it says let me make sure I'm touching both prongs here. Yeah, and it says open loop. All right. So now let's pull out the new one and see what it says. Maybe this resistance check doesn't mean anything. I don't know. But we're about to find out. So here's a new guy. Looks a lot cleaner, I, I must say. Uh, yes, the things look uh, different in terms. I'll show you that in a minute. So let me see, can I reset this up here? First of all, let me look at it first to make sure that I can get a, a good read in here. Okay, it says 21.6, and that's the same thing, a 21.5. That's the same thing that I tested. I didn't show it on camera, but I tested the resistance on the purge um, solenoid valve. So I'm putting the old one back in there. How can you do the backlight here? I just want to do the, how do you do the backlight here? There we go. So I can see. I'm going to try to make it brighter so you guys can see it. And yeah, so that way I can see it a little bit from this angle a little bit better here. So when I go here, hold up. Dang it, hold up. <laughs> hold up. Let me try that again. I'm not fast enough here. Because it's trying to just get these two prongs in here. Just give me a second. I just can't hold it still good enough. But anyway, you get the picture. It's 20, I, I did it while ago and it was 21.6 if I can hold this thing steady. I just can't hold it steady. That's the only problem. Hold on. Let me set it right here in my lap then. And try it, see. 
I don't know if y'all can see that, but uh, anyway, it's 21.6. You just got to take my word for it. I'm going to just do it one more time. Twenty-one point five. There, there it is, right there. If you can see that, I don't think you can. Gonna... But anyway, y'all, you get the point. This one has a resistance to it. That one right there, the old one, which is this one right here, just said open loop. So that thing right there is just shot. It's just not even. That's why they said it's a circuit because it's just not even completing the circuit, and um, and um, therefore it just might be venting or not venting or just you just can't tell. All right, so now. We got to take the piggyback and put up here because uh, this definitely, this connector is definitely different than this on the new one is definitely different than the old one. So let's go ahead and slide this up here. Okay. Got that in place. All right. So now let's go back to, okay, that's the bracket there. Let's see here. This is how it goes like this. I had to verify. So I just slide this back into place here. Should clip down in there, but I'll just slide it hard enough. There we go. Put this back on the end. Bam, just like that. So I'm gonna go just reinstall this again. Again, all this is, is that it's just a half inch bolt right here. I may try to take the camera up on here just to show you uh, where it's at but again I honestly it, it just really ain't enough room and it's hard for me to get the camera up on here because I'm laying on my back if I had a truck you know I, I, I'm just going to skip that part just, just know there's a half an inch bolt right here you have to take out and that's it take this hose off take that hose off this whole unit slides right out just like that after you unplug this um piggy right here so anyway let me go ahead and install this and see what will happen All right, so in this part of the video, I did not realize that my mic had uh, died. And um, I had uh, what I was saying here was that I had driven, a cl cleared the codes, was, I drove the truck around, went through a few drive cycles just to make sure nothing funny would happen. And now, since we have the new part up here, we want to take a look at the decay now. So now, if you go back and look at it early in the video, or if you remember, the decay was pretty instant. Soon as we drew a vacuum on the fuel tank and we um, hit the, um, you know, uh, uh, seal, the vacuum just went away because of the leak. Okay, now that we have put the new uh, vent solenoid valve on the canister, the decay uh, should be a whole lot slower. Again, I've tested this out on my other two Buicks, um, done a purging seal, and if there is a little bit of decay very slowly. Uh, there seems to be to me some apparent tolerance to how this stuff works. Again, if it doesn't, it, the car checks and if decay like drops, I guess so many um, millimeters of mercury or inches of water within a certain you know time, which is probably in seconds, then it will consider it a low leak. I mean, a, um, a, a large leak or a small leak. Now here, if you take a look at what's going on on the screen here now, is that we are not venting right now to seal the system and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, draw a vacuum on it. And once we draw the vacuum on it, um, and then we seal the system off, what we're gonna see is that the decay now is extremely slow. Now take a look at this. It's going down you know, little by little versus if you go back early in the video, it just, pretty much instantly went away, you know, you know, the um, vacuum that was on the system. So I'm pretty pleased with um, how this turned out. Hopefully um, I've done all my checks right and hopefully I'm right here. And again, like I said, I'm a DIYer. And if I overlook something or is there something else that you can point out, or, you know, just say it in the comments to help me learn if I'm, you know, if something I didn't necessarily look at the situation right. Or if you think I could have used my smoke machine, scan tool, or anything else in a better way, definitely, um, you know, just, just just put it down and you help, you, you know, you can help me out. You can help other people out. That's also reading the comments. Um, but back to what, what we see here again, if you look at the slow decay, I'm just letting it go slowly 
And it's going to end up going back positive. But again, look how long this is taking. I mean, this is taking minutes versus uh, in the uh, purge and seal we did early in the video before we changed out the uh, uh, vent solenoid valve on the canister. That was instantaneous, basically, the loss of vacuum. So I think that I have a fix here. Um, again, I didn't see it because I put I used the smoke in the gas tank. Um, you know, as you saw, like I am confident it's not the gas tank and I, I gas cap. I'll tell you why, because I did buy a new gas cap uh, a few months ago for the cockpit. This check engine light has been on for a few months. And because I knew it was just a purge, because I just knew it was an EVAP leak, I never really bothered with it. I figured when I get around to doing it, I'll do it. So that's how that happened. And again, I put a new gas cap on it. So not thinking it's a gas cap. I didn't see smoke from anywhere else because again, once I put it into the gas tank, it would, it kind of spread, it kind of bifurcated. It went to the vent solenoid valve and went back into the tank area. So if it was leaking on top of the tank or anywhere else, um, I probably would have saw some smoke somewhere else. And I didn't see any smoke anywhere else except on top of the purge uh, valve. I uh, mean, not the purge valve, sorry, the uh, vent valve on top of the canister. So I decided to go ahead and change that out. And I think that um, that probably resolved the issue. So that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. And um, you guys take care. And I'll see you in the next one.